Hi, my name is Stuart, and thank you very much for joining this presentation. Um, I've been an LVM contributor for six years now, when I joined ARM, and um, I work there on the uh, Clang and LVM-based compilers. And today I want to give you an update on our efforts to improve the uh, performance of the SPEC 2017 benchmark. Um, we're going to compare Clang and, and GCC, and we're going to target AR64. First, a little bit about the um, about the benchmark spec 2017, and using a quote here, it's used for performance measurements that uh, can be used to compare compute intensive workloads on different computer system. Well, actually, it's it's a family of benchmarks. So there's a spec 2006 version and spec to uh, spec 2017 version. The 2006 version is deprecated now, so 2017 is the latest one uh, on which we also focus. Um, there are actually uh, subsuites for measuring integer and or floating point performance. And we'll focus on the, the integer one. Um, one of our goals is to make generic um, uh, contributions. So we don't only want to improve uh, spec, but they need to be uh, generic. And while we do target ARC64, we'll present um, target independent optimizations today. This is how this is, this is the situation, um, how it looked like when we started this work. This is comparing LVM 12 versus GCC 11 with optimization level O fast. So what, what you see here is, is that there's four applications that are kind of 10% behind. So the, the first one is ProBands, um, MCF, DeepSheng, and Leela. They are all 10% uh, behind. And then we have two big outliers, Omnet PP, which is more than 15% behind GCC, and the biggest one, X264, 30% uh, 30, 30 behind. So overall, we have a geomean gap of 10% compared to uh, GCC 11. And well, that is a that is a large gap. And um, and that's what we want to, 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 to close. So that's what we want to achieve. We did the first round of performance analysis, and we found that the gap in MCF was due to a missing optimization, function specialization. And in Omnet PP, there was an opportunity for loop on switching. X264 is, is all about auto vectorization. And in Lila, there's a missed condi conditional store optimization. So that is, um, they, they were the first thing that we started addressing. So my colleague Jingu started looking at loop on switching. And um, that's an optimization related to hoisting loop invariant control flow, and it was missing something. So he ported partial invariant on switching from an existing pass loop on switch to simple loop on switch. And the goal there was it that will finally allow Im elimination of a dead loop, so it has a big impact. Then we also started working on a new pass function specialization, and there's a separate presentation on that. And but that has been uh, committed, added to the code base, but it's uh, not yet enabled by default, so that is still work in progress. And then also we had various smaller auto vectorization improvements related to X X two six four. We did some. This is slightly uh, target specific. We added some match pattern, and we did some um, more efficient handling of loads of I eight vectors and some cost modeling. With those improvements committed, the situation looked a lot better. So big improvements in Omnet PP. It went down from seventeen percent behind to five percent. And we got a let's say five percent improvement in um, in in X two six four, and the result of that was we are we were now eight point three percent behind GeoMean compared to ten percent before. So that was nice. We continued working on simplifying sim on simplify CFG. There was a trick to speculate a store preceded by a local non escaping load that could be fixed. And we did quite some work on, on, on loop unrolling. The first one was to extend the runtime unrolling of loops with multiple exit blocks. And slightly more target specific is enabling unrolling of non constant bounds for AR64 targets. Um, but if this is not enabled for your target, that could be interesting to look at. And that improved things uh, further. So uh, it, that had impact on X264, DeepSheng, and uh, a big impact on, on Lila. So we were now 7.3% uh, behind, and that's where we are um, today. So some first observations. All the work that we've done so far are target independent IR passes and optimizations. So not really anything AR64 specific, except some cost modeling uh, work. 
And um, what we identified is that there were passes that heavily interact with each other, for example, the on-roll and the vectorizers, and um, not giving us the most efficient results. There were also missing functionality, for example, the SLP vectorizer. There were passes that were not enabled by default, for example, GVN hoist and function specialization. And uh, there are passes that are not generic enough yet, uh, for example, loop distribute. Um, to look at the first one, pass ordering challenges, the code example here is typical for X264. Uh, it has many kernels, loops, with small uh, constant integer bounds, so 16 in this case. The problem here is that the full unroller comes along first, fully unrolls this loop, so the loop vectorizer doesn't get a chance to look at it. And since the SLP vectorizer is missing some features, we completely miss out on vectorization of, this, um, of these kind of loops. Um, I kicked off a discussion on this to not do any unrolling before vectorization, and it turns out there's a whole, there's a whole bunch of PRs related uh, to kind of missed opportunities and, and, and this. But the consensus was that full unrolling should happen early to allow scalar optimizations a, um, to, to, to have them a chance to work on fully unrolled loops, and also that the SLP vectorizer needed fixing. So that was the result of that discussion which brings us to passes lacking features and the SLP vectorizer. So the SLP vectorizer is not able to emit runtime alias checks um, if it cannot statically determine um, um, overlapping of, of memory or not. So it was not able to, um, to determine legality of the transformation and bailing. Um, Florian is, is, um, um, is working on this to implement initial memory versioning. And once we've got that, that will unlock a, a whole lot of new optimization opportunities in the SLP vectorizer. And once we've got that in, we probably need to look at if conversion and cost modeling. But that is a big missing feature to address the X264 uh, gap. We also have passes that are not enabled. I mentioned function specialization. That is a relatively new one, but we need to uh, see if that is generic enough and it's worth spending the extra compile time um, on. Um, GV, uh, kind of a long outstanding problem with GVN hoist is it has been um, committed, uh, reverted and recommitted and re reverted quite a few times. And I believe it still has correctness issues and performance problems, but it is crucial for a couple of um, uh, spec cases. Uh, my colleague Montiel is now working on this. He's creating simpler versions of this to hoist scalars and loads and stores and making this part of, of GVN. And that seems to be going well. Um, I also wanted to mention something about passes not generic enough. Um, there is a pass loop distribute that helps a, a case in spec 2006. Although it's not our focus, it would be nice to, uh, to also um, optimize that one. And we tried to make this more generic to see if we could get it enabled. And to do that, we needed to make the cost model uh, more generic. We kind of failed in that. Um, it, we were not able to make it very generic. So for now, we've, we've, we've kind of given up on that one. Um, kind of related, there's also maybe something missing, something not working for us. And that is, maybe, that is mostly related to loop invariant code motion. The philosophy here is that it's a canonicalization transformation, which means that it aggressively hoists everything it can. And if that is not uh, optimal, then it's the backend's responsibility to undo this. Except we don't really have a good solution there. We have loop sync, that's an IR pass, but um, and it works only on uh, with profile information. And we have a backend pass, machine sync, but it can't sync um, instructions back into loops. So we're missing something. Um, this is a um, this occurs in spec, but in many other code bases for us too. And this is a uh, yeah a big problem for us. Um, we did more performance analysis. There are various kind of point fixes for which we have raised upstream uh, bug reports, which is related to missed opportunities for register promotion, something to do with multiple evaluations of gaps, suboptimal placements of loop exit blocks, and a failure to recognize a instruction. And um, that's what we will be working on. Uh, concluding, we still have quite a way to go. Um, they are mostly... Um, Target independent passes, high on our list are the auto vectorization, the SLP vectorizer, and the hoisting problem, so undoing uh, loop invariant code mo motion. Um, once we've we have um, um, once we have those uh, addressed those two big issues, we need to rinse and repeat the whole process. 
and uh, until we reach kind of parity with with GCC, which is um, our goal here. Um, any feedback on this wor uh, work is welcome. So please get into touch on the LVM list, Fabricator, or emails. Um, thank you very much.